Joel at Earth Tools here, and uh, we're out here on a hot summer day, ready to dig potatoes. So I've got my ancient BCS 850 walking tractor here that I've had since 1998, and it's equipped with one of our Aldo Biagioli root digger potato plows. Um, also equipped with a set of barbell weight hanger posts. <clears throat> now anytime you're getting ready to do work with a walk behind tractor that requires extra ground traction, uh, it's a good idea to put wheel weight on there because that's what is the most effective and cheapest way to increase the traction of one of these little machines. The biggest challenge of a walk behind tractor, uh, or one of the biggest challenges of a walk behind tractor, is its ability to do tractive work. Tractive meaning using implements that require high amounts of ground traction. Um, potato digger is a perfect example, or something like a moldboard plow, or a bulldozer blade, you know, snow removal blade. Any of those chores require wheel traction. They don't require any power through the power takeoff of the tractor, that is through the implement drive shaft. These, these types of implements are not driven. So they rely solely on the wheels to do the work of moving the machine forward. Now we'll move on to actually digging. So we've got our potato digger plow arranged in the back. Uh, this right here, there's a little thing you can loosen. Or if I can get it loose. There we go. And lower this thing down. Uh, that's probably about good right there. Get your depth. That looks around right. And then a very important thing that you have to adjust is the angle. As I crank this adjustment up and down, this, this piece, by the way, is what's called the tool carrier. When you buy an Aldo Biagioli brand tool, you've got three components. You've got the draw bar, which is what actually attaches to the tractor. You've got the tool carrier in between, and you've got the actual implement itself, in this case, the potato digger. This same tool bar, I'm sorry, I'm sorry the same draw bar and tool carrier accepts six different implements. Bed shaper, cultivator, moldboard plow, subsoiler. The important thing about the tool carrier is it allows the angle of the tool to be adjusted in relation to the angle of the tractor. So when I crank this thing up or down, if you watch the tip of this down here, it's actually changing the angle. That is, it's cranking this whole arm up or down, so it's changing the angle, the attack angle of this point. That's critical, because if that attack angle isn't right, you'll never get the thing down into the ground. Uh, or it'll never stay in the ground. Or if you've got it too aggressive, it'll go down too quickly and try to go to China all the time and you'll have a terrible time. So getting that adjustment right may require a few practice passes. Uh, if, this, if it's the first time you've ever used one of these potato plows or any of these type of digging tools for all the, from all the Biagioli, um, it's a good idea to make some practice runs in a place where you don't have potatoes, for example, because you don't want to be going too shallow through there and slicing all your potatoes in half. So make sure you're getting down to where you need to be, kind of maximum depth. The potato digger plow has usually no trouble going to the full worked depth of soil that was in that bed. That is, if you work that bed eight inches deep in the spring, this will typically go right to the bottom of that eight inches and kind of bottom out there. Um, what the potato digger plow doesn't do very well is really long tap rooted things like sweet potatoes and carrots, if you grow your carrots really long, because they will even grow down past the level of where the soil was worked. They can get down deeper than that, and then this will only get the better half of the uh, sweet potato or whatever. So not a great sweet potato digger. So I'm gonna crank this up about like this. From experience, that should be about right. I may have to adjust it as we go forward here. And uh, I'm gonna tr run the tractor in a pretty high gear, probably third, um, to get some velocity through the soil. I'm also going to lock my tractor wheel differential to lock the two wheels on the axle together so I get maximum pulling power. Now it is August. We are super dry here. This is a raised bed that's been formed for a few years, so it's better about retaining moisture than a flat bed. But we're in very high clay soil, very tough, and very little moisture. So I don't have tremendous hopes about this being really easy, but it's going to be better than digging with a potato fork. Also note that we have already raked off, actually my lovely wife, has already raked off all the mulch and old dead potato vines. If you try to dig potatoes with one of these small tractors pulling through all this type of residue, you're gonna have a terrible time because that stuff will just ball up on the front of the potato digger plow and uh, impede traction. So get all that raked off first, pick up any potatoes you see exposed on the surface. For some people don't do this type of mulching. Uh, you know, a lot of people hill their potatoes and that's fine too, as long as you don't make your hills so huge and steep that uh, the tractor actually bottoms out on the hill as it's trying to straddle it. 
So keep that in mind when you're building potato hills. Uh, but we, I don't hill my potatoes much. I just grow them in a raised bed and, and we throw the mulch on them so we get all that out of the way. But getting the potatoes that are exposed off the surface is important because I don't want to be running over those potatoes and potentially spinning my wheels and skinning up the potatoes. So we've already picked all those up and got a couple bushels that way. This is about a 100-foot bed with actually three rows of potatoes in it. So I'm going to make a total of three passes before it's done, but I'm going to make, not going to make you put up with that entire thing. I'll just make a short run here so you can see how it works, and we'll call it good. Well, starting would be nice. Before you start into your row of potatoes, you want to make sure to start back from the row a considerable amount. If you go right up to the beginning of this row of potatoes and start, well, that plow has to slide, kind of slowly sink in to get to its depth. So the first three or four feet, you'll slice a bunch of potatoes in half. So I'm starting, my potato row actually starts right in front of my tires, but I'm starting considerably before that. with growing them on a raised bed if you're trying to only dig one row on the edge the wheel wants to fall off the bed. Get the idea. 